Hello, this is Laura Chapel, and welcome to the course on Introduction to Wireshark. In this course, we're going to begin with a very quick description of Wireshark's purpose, and I'll give you a little bit of the behind the scenes regarding the creation of Wireshark. I'm then going to take you in and show you how to obtain the latest version of Wireshark, and then we'll compare the Wireshark release versions, also referred to as the stable versions, with the development versions. And I want to show you how you can go and get the latest development versions of Wireshark. Then I'll go through and show you how you can report a Wireshark bug or submit an enhancement request. I'm also going to show you how to search the bug track database to see if the problem that you are going through with Wireshark has already been submitted as a bug. Then we will take a look at the process required to capture packets on a wired or a wireless network. You may be surprised to learn that Wireshark itself cannot capture traffic. So when you're inside of Wireshark and you begin the capture process, Wireshark actually calls a tool called DumpCap to do the packet capturing. Wireshark itself is simply the graphical interface and the interpretation piece, but it can't actually do capture. We'll take a look at the Wiretap library as well, and I'll show you how Wireshark can open various trace file types using the Wiretap library. After that, we'll go through the Wireshark internals. I'll show you how packets are brought up into Wireshark's capture engine or through the Wiretap library up into the core engine. We'll talk a little bit about how the Wireshark dissectors work and the purpose of plugins and where display filters are applied to the traffic. Then we'll talk briefly about the interface options, which at the current time we have two interface options. We have GTK Plus, and we have the QT option. Now the future for Wireshark is the QT option. So that's the version that Wireshark development is moving towards for the future. I'll then take you into the start page and show you the four elements in the start page and how to use those elements. And then I'll take you into the nine graphical user interface elements. It's important to understand how the graphical elements relate to each other. For example, you may be familiar with Wireshark's three pane display, where we have a packet list pane on top, and then a packet detail pane in the middle, and then a packet list pane down below. In this section, I'll show you how these three panes relate to each other. Then we'll take a look at Wireshark's main menu. Now I'd like you to try to get away from dependency on the main menu. In Wireshark, many of the tasks can be completed faster using the main toolbar or right mouse click functionality. But we'll go through the items in the main menu that have to be done using the main menu. Then after that, we will take a look at the main toolbar and what you can do with that. Then we'll go into the filter toolbar, which is Wireshark's display filter toolbar. And that area in Wireshark has had a lot of enhancements added in the last couple of revisions. We will take a look at not only how a display filter is entered into the filter toolbar, but we'll also look at where Wireshark's filter expression buttons reside. I highly recommend that you take Wireshark Core Training Course Number 9, Create and Apply Display Filters, to really master Wireshark's display filter capability. I'll show you how you can make Wireshark's wireless toolbar visible as well. Now this works specifically with the Air PCAP adapter. And then we will go through many of the options available with right-click functionality. I want to show you how you can quickly create filters, how you can quickly create columns, in Wireshark just simply by right mouse clicking on an item. As we work in this in this class, I will go through and define these key functions of both the menus and the toolbars. This course finishes up with a Wireshark Certified Network Analyst practice quiz 
and a challenge.